Hey guys, my name is Ethan, this is Carbra, and welcome to the series where I teach you how to build a game in Python. Uh, the setup is different, I'm at home from uni over the summer, uh, so it's going to be like this over the next few months. It's not actually that bad, to be honest, I've got you know the monitors behind me and the lights everywhere, so it's pretty alright. Um, but yeah, in this series I'm going to be teaching you how to build a game in Python. This is the introduction and requirements video, so we're going to be going over, or I'm going to be talking about some stuff about the series. Um, and then I'm going to be showing you kind of what you need to install and kind of what you need to set up and that's all going to be in one video. Uh, so quite an important video. Uh, so the first thing I want to say is kind of what the game is going to be about. So we're building a snake clone uh, per se. It's called Snick uh, because it's funny. <laughs> And um, yeah, it's pretty much just kind of a, a standard snake game. There's nothing too fancy about it. But it's been designed in such a way that I can kind of show off the basics and also give you like a few more advanced ideas about how to better set up the game. Um, because obviously, you know, there is a lot to deal with with game development and having them kind of separate and having these kind of different structures, um, I think is probably the best way to go with it. The other important thing I want to talk about is difficulty. Uh, building a game is not easy at all. Uh, it doesn't matter what you're using, it's not easy to do. Uh, and when you're you know, hard coding it in Python, um, yeah, it's not, yeah, that doesn't make it any easier. Um, so this series is not for beginners. If anything, it's kind of for advanced Python programmers. If you're an intermediate person, you could probably follow along. Um, as long as you know object-oriented programming uh, pretty well, then you should be fine, really, because uh, game development relies an awful lot on that. Um, we're going to be doing some quite advanced things in this, but that's just kind of a consequence of me kind of wanting to show you some better ways to do it rather than just kind of hard coding everything in a single file. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a bit of a trade-off, but so long as you know object-oriented programming, you should be okay, but if you're new to Python, then I would recommend um, not sticking with this one for the time being. I do have a How to Python series, there'll be a card. Is it that direction or that direction? It's one of the two. Um, uh, and that kind of shows you the basics of Python. There's going to be more added to the intermediates over the next kind of week or two, hopefully. Uh, so that should give you a slightly better idea uh, of what to do. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of let you know that. But yeah, that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about, I think. Uh, I'm going to cut over to me on the computer to talk you through what you need to install. But to be honest, there really isn't that much. Pygame is pretty self-contained. Um, so... Yeah, there's, there's not a lot to talk about with that. Of course, if you found the video helpful at any point, then consider liking to let me know and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos in the series. But yeah, with that out of the way, let's get into it. And we're in our desktop. As I said in the introduction, there's not a huge amount to go over with this, but I do want to talk about, you know, operating systems a little bit, um, and then we'll get uh, kind of get into the installation stuff, which there isn't really that much to do. Uh, but first of all, operating systems, I'm going to be using Windows straight up. Uh, as you know, a number of people know, uh, I recently switched to a setup with Windows and Windows Subsystem for Linux, so I got the benefits of developing on Linux, while also having the benefits of just using Windows. Um, but Pygame is, is graphical, and uh, WSL doesn't support it yet. So, uh, <laughs> great timing by me to, uh, to do the next series on one that, you know, I can't even use WSL. But... Um, all the code in this should work on Linux and Windows just as well. I actually plan this series pretty much on Linux. Um, I'm just doing it on Windows now. So whichever operating system you use, it's not going to matter, really. Uh, the only obvious downsides of Windows is a bit more awkward to deal with, uh, as I've had, to, I've had to install all sorts of stuff um, to get development on Windows working again. But uh, with that, uh, we just need to get to the actual you know, stuff to use. Uh, so... First, obviously, you're going to need Python. So the version I'm going to be using in this series is 3.9.6. Uh, we're not going to be using Python 10 in this. That will probably be the next series or more likely the one after that, I think. Uh, but 3.9.6, I'd recommend just downloading the most recent version of 3.9. I believe this will work on 3.10, but I haven't tested it. Um, so, you know, feel free to do so. And if it does work, leave a comment below and then I'll pin that and then, you know, everyone will know. The other thing you need is an IDE. Now I use code.visualstudio.com. I use Visual Studio. You can use any IDE you want, obviously, but if you're struggling for an IDE, um, then you, you know, I recommend Visual Studio. Although with the with the difficulty of this series, I would kind of expect you to already have Python 
and the ID kind of installed and worked out um, and you know how to use them because obviously this ain't no basic series. <laughs> Uh, so now we're going to go into our terminal. I've already kind of got it on the uh, the actual directory itself. And you need to create a virtual environment. Uh, so for this, it's just pi 3.9-mvenv.venv. Uh, if you on Linux, it's uh, python 3.9-m.venv. I've already got a venv, so I'm just going to enter that and let it error. But we actually need to get into the virtual environment. Uh, well, you... <laughs> I should say you don't have to use a virtual environment if you don't want to. I just always do. I always recommend it. Um, although, you know, you can get away without it. Uh, so .ven slash script slash activate. If you're on Linux, that is source.ven slash bin slash activate. I have no idea why it's different. And now we're in a virtual environment. We can actually install some stuff. So you could do, uh, you know, pip uh, install or you know pi dash m or whatever you want to use for me because i'm in a virtual environment i've got to do dot vem uh, slash scripts slash uh, pip.exe which is annoying uh, we're going to do you know install and then we just want pi game that's the only one we want because uh, pi game is entirely self-contained uh, so after my internet i'm at home at the moment so the internet's a bit shoddy but once my internet decides what it wants to do it'll download we're using pi game 2.0.1 uh, in this series. 1.x should work for the most part, but there are some differences. Uh, so if you can use Pygame 2, then I would recommend you do so just to make sure you're in line with the series and nothing actually breaks. But yeah, Pygame 2 pretty much only just came out, uh, I think a few months ago now. Uh, so yeah, that's basically us installed. So now we can go into our ID and I'm going to spend the rest of the video kind of explaining kind of this stuff at the side. So you obviously have the Venv. The editor config, the getting all the license and the readme are just there for the repository. You don't need to worry about any of those. Um, yeah, yeah, they're just kind of there down the side. Editing me just jumping in here real quick. Uh, I realized during the recording the next video that I actually forgot to cover something. So... Obviously a game has, you know, visual and sound assets and we need to kind of put a folder in there that contains all of these things. So I actually have mine here. I'm just going to reveal it in the file explorer now. So I have it here. This is my planning directory. So you can see all the different episodes I planned already. But I have this assets folder here and in there we have backgrounds. I don't have any backgrounds at the moment. We'll probably add some more kind of when we go on. The assets aren't quite done yet, but we're not going to need them for a while. So it's fine. We have some background music. There is actually something done for that. I just haven't downloaded it yet. Uh, we have some fonts. We don't actually need the Moonflower one. Uh, we have some sound effects, which will obviously be in the folder as well. And then some sprites, so we just have two um, here. I'd like to say thanks to my friend Jackstar, who made most of the music, or actually I think all of the music, uh, and most of the visuals. I think the only one he didn't do was this, <laughs> this snake part. This was mine. I was in charge of this bit. <laughs> um, woo! But yeah, I'm pretty sure every single sound and all the music and everything came from him. These assets will be publicly available in the GitHub repository for those that wish to use them, uh, just as kind of a testing run. Uh, please don't actually use them in the final game, uh, or if you do obviously make a game beyond this. This is this is just a series to kind of teach you how to, how to use it. It's not something to be sold at all. Uh, so we're just going to click and drag these in here. We're just using exactly the same assets. Copy folder. Now we have our assets in here, and you can see kind of everything, and now everything is good to go. Uh, so, yeah, I will hand back to past me to do the outro for the first video, and now we've actually covered that bit. The first bit of coding is going to actually be next time, where we kind of learn how to create a window, and we learn how to kind of just get the thing up and running. Really, it's not going to be anything displayed on the screen, but, you know, we're going to have a window open, and it's going to stay open. Because uh, that is the first thing you kind of need to know when, when dealing with Pygame. But yeah, with that, we've got all the setup out of the way. Uh, if you have any questions, then feel free to leave a comment below. Or you can join the Discord server using the link in the description. I'd like to thank my amazing patrons who are on screen now. One pound a month and you can be on this screen too. And I will see you next time where, well, we do exactly what I just said. Um, so I'll see you for that.